welcome to the 10 and 2 podcast. I'm Kat. I'm Catlin. And we're here every week talking watches, photography, adventure, and exploring the world of horology. Look at you go. I know. That I think it's been a few, sounded so good. I think it's been a few weeks since I, I nailed that one. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple of weeks. I feel like people may like it, though, when we mess it up, because it may remind them of the disaster we used to be, where it took us 30 minutes to, to get an intro. Somehow, some or for some reason, people enjoy that. That we're a disaster. No, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you? I am. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm like, I'm okay. Waiting on that new watch. Waiting on this. Y'all, like, man, here I am. I kept refreshing my tracking. It's been out for delivery since 3 a.m. We are recording at 1040 a.m. Mm-hmm. Still not delivered. I know. I'm I'm stress. Like, uh, it's not even, I'm just antsy. Yeah. This ground. You're impatient. <laughs> Yeah, this ground delivery is just not for the, it's for the birds, man. Yeah, I always do that two day, two day. Man. Yeah, because I know how I know how bad it can be. Shout out to sellers who do two day delivery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But how are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, staying busy and kind of same old, same old. Getting ready for the holidays. Uh, we, uh, you know, this our listeners may not know this, but we may be moving. So that's something that's uh, pretty big. And Nathan says Merry Christmas like a new house. Yeah. And all the stress that comes along with buying, selling, and moving. Yeah, I don't think it'll be, it won't be at Christmas, but probably after. Yeah. My voice got real raspy. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but to be clear, for for all listeners' sake, say, Kat is staying in around Nashville. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not like she's moving not away. like leaving. No. I'm not crying. <laughs> so so she's not leaving. More than likely good. it's gonna be like five minutes up the road. Well and and we love this house. We obviously have way too much too many rooms for ourselves, but um we bought a money pit and um it, a house that needed lots of renovation and we've figured out that we're we don't love that. Like we don't <laughs> love renovating. Um it takes a lot of time and it takes way, 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 way a lot of money. Yeah. And it's just, it's stressful. We're at the point in our lives now where we, we you know, we want to do other things. We want to have money to do travel and, and, you know, to buy the thing. My poor husband has been wanting to upgrade his car for like three years. And, and we just put the house first. The house always comes mm-hmm. first. And uh, yeah, it, you know, it's, it's more than we need at the end of the day. Yeah. So we're, we're okay downsizing and just getting something newer that we just don't even have to touch. So yeah. I'm excited. That's it's always so fun. exciting. Yeah. It's going to be stressful. I can't wait. So. I'm very excited to decorate a new podcast room. I know. <laughs> no. But we have to so I don't the problem is if you guys don't know this, we we I used to have the Stova Verus Growl Worn and Wild collaboration. Yeah. It's so weird saying I used to have. I know. Um and we literally took this watch to the the local, Lowe's. to Lowe's, yeah. <laughs> to get the paint color because we loved it. Yeah. And we don't have this watch anymore. No. So I was thinking what? what do you think about like like dark, like a black room? A black room? Yeah, man. I'll show you some pictures. I have All some right. ideas. Cat, cat already. So has I'm this getting some inspiration. Out. I follow uh, Becky and Chris on yes. YouTube, and they have this like very like dark gray black theme in their podcast room, and it looks so good. We're, Ten and two's going gothic, y'all. Yeah, going gothic, <laughs> total gothic. <laughs> All right. Uh, Well, we have an exciting show today. We're going to be reviewing the Seiko Prospects, the ice blue dial, which is only made for the U.S. The U.S. market, yeah. Um, And this is the SPB 179 and uh, very excited. I think these are considered sumo watches. I I, I couldn't find a definitive answer, but they look just like the sumo. Yeah, I think they're they're definitely sumo inspired. So we had the blue dial variant Mm -hmm. in, but these are, there's three watches. There's the blue dial with the blue bezel. Mm -hmm. There's a green um, and then there is like a like a gray with a gray bezel. Mm-hmm. So that one's really cool too. Thank goodness that one did not come in because my wallet would have been very stressed out. Yeah, <laughs> so. they're they're fantastic. These pay tribute to the um, the Seiko dive watches that were have been in like the coldest and iciest conditions. This is like the fiftieth anniversary of Naomi Yumura. I probably completely mispronounced that, and I apologize. And he conquered Mount Everest wearing a Seiko diver in 1970, which is really cool. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm I'm all for Seiko. You know that I, we both love Seiko. Yeah. Um, I've done well to just keep one in my collection. I have the the Arnie 
right now, the Safarni, I guess. And yeah. I just love that watch. But I, I have a I have a weak spot for Seiko divers. I think it's, it's so easy to because it, it's that watch that even before we were into watches, we knew about. Mm-hmm. It was relatively like attainable before we realized before either of us ever thought we would spend, <laughs> you know, thousands of dollars on a watch. Yeah, it was like, oh, you know, it's it's five, six hundred dollars. Mm, it's still much, but I would probably buy that at some point. And you can get so lost in Seiko divers. I mean, mm-hmm. or just Seiko in general. They just have a wide, wide collection. They constantly have new models. Um, this is just, this was really cool. I'm glad that we got the ice blue because it just kind of, it's it's the one that stood out to me. I do like the gray, but this one, I wanted to see the dial color in person, especially when it's the blue because you yeah. never know like pictures that you see online versus, and they are very true to color. I will say that it, what you see online is pretty much what you get. Yeah. It, it's exactly what you think of when you think of an Arctic blue dial. Mm-hmm. Um, and the dial, all of the dials on, on all three have this really great waffle pattern to mm-hmm. them. Um, you have a aluminum bezel on all of them. Um, the case size is 45 45 mm-hmm. does not fit that way and of course we'll talk about that yeah. um, kind of in general um, and then what are some of the other specs Kat? so it is 13 millimeters thick which no surprise it's a thick diver mm-hmm. um, 52.3 millimeters lug to lug so it is quite long um, the bracelet does have raised center links in the middle that have like a polished beveled edge so the bracelet is a little bit more finished than your typical Seiko bracelet the price comes in at $900 so you are kind of getting close to that thousand dollar range you want the quality to be a little bit better and you do see those things. Um, there's several like, there's really sharp edges on the case itself. And again, just kind of leans itself to being a little bit of a higher model Seiko. Mm-hmm. It has the 6R35 movement inside, which is better than the 6R15 because it has a 70 hour power reserve. Yeah. Seiko states that this is a, um, uh, not a high accuracy, but more of a high performing caliber it's not higher accuracy as far as like it's minus 15 plus 25 seconds a day it's just, it's not for me what you're getting in a thousand dollar watch basically it's a little disappointing mm-hmm. however i've read people say that it runs great other people say it runs terribly you never you really never know what you're going to get with the right. Seiko. that's just fact well and the reality is is for for i think a lot of watch collectors and i know for me and you we rarely will wear the same watch mm-hmm. for two or three days in a row it's gonna be hard to tell so i wouldn't really notice at the end of the day and a i know, lot of people i know do a lot of people want to <laughs> come at people me for do. that i get it at work all the time i get the people who are like my watch is running six seconds slow per day and i'm like yeah. how do you even know that but i get it it's a it is it is. I guess if you, you know, at the end of the day, when you're buying a mechanical timepiece, you expect it to do one thing and that's to tell you what time it is and it should do so more yeah. accurately. Yeah. But yeah. Some of the other things, it does have a trifold clasp on it, which is nice. Mm-hmm. It's ISO certified sapphire crystal. Um, you already covered the aluminum bezel, which the aluminum bezel here is actually kind of polished from far away. It gives a look of being ceramic looks, until you get up close. Yeah. Now, of course, it's going to scratch over time. But uh, I kind of like that it has that that polished finish to it. So it's not it's not that dull aluminum, kind of like the Tudor. It's more of a, again, it's just more polished mm-hmm. and makes it pop a little bit more. But I think that covers the basics. Um, oh, and it's 20 millimeter lugs, which is surprising for a watch this big and it wouldn't have 22. But I think that it helps wear it a little bit better on the wrist. I agree. Gives the illusion that it's a little smaller the than... The bracelet's smaller. So mm-hmm. it just, it does. It wears very comfortably. And yeah. we've talked about this on the podcast before. Seiko does magic in making these big watches fit perfectly fine. We both have just under like a six and a half inch wrist. Yeah. If they fit really well for some <laughs> magical, like, I don't know who they sell their soul to, but yeah. they definitely make it work. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, so let's get into our review questions. So okay. those are the facts. If you guys haven't listened to one of our review episodes, we basically ask ourselves a couple of questions anytime that uh, Kat or I would consider buying a new watch. Um, so these are questions that we kind of go over during our review. Uh, and the first one, again, these are all opinions, but that's why you listen to this podcast. So <laughs> it is what it is. So first question is, what is our favorite and least favorite feature? So Kat, what's your favorite feature? My favorite feature is the ice blue dial here and the pattern of the dial. I think if it was just a plain background or a plain um, just dial with no texture, I don't think I'd like it as much. I think the 
waffle pattern plus the ice blue just really, I mean, it looks like ice to be honest with you, like a glacier almost kind of look mm-hmm. to it. And I just, I think they really contrast together perfectly. The baby blue color is just one that we really don't see that often. I, a lot of people do play with blues, but not this shade of blue. So this is something that definitely stood out for me and is probably... Out of the three, it's the more feminine option. So I think if, you, if you're if you a female and you like these Seiko divers and you want something that looks a little bit more feminine because Seiko tends to be a little bit more masculine with a lot of their color options, then this is a great option for you. So um, that being said, I don't think it's too feminine that it, a man could not pull this off either. Yeah. I just think that if, if you want a little bit more of a feminine color out of that gray and out of the uh, green. The green. The green, mm-hmm. then uh, this would be the option I'd go for. What about you? What's your favorite thing? Yeah, you know, I'm a really big fan of the hands and markers on this. Um, I, I mean, really, the di- the dial is absolutely amazing. Uh, the blue, everything you said, mm-hmm. you don't ever see this color. Um, but I really like the the hands, the second hand in particular. I think it has a really fun personality. I'm not sure what that what you would call that design on the second hand. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but I'm sure it has a name. I, I'm <laughs> sure it does. And somebody's probably yelling at the at their car stereo <laughs> or something or other. But but yeah, it just it has this really neat personality to mm-hmm. it. And I think that it kind of it stands out on the dial, but mm-hmm. without being like there's a lot going on when you really think about it. Like you have these huge markers that are all very different, especially like the 12 o'clock marker is so unique and, yeah. and it's uniquely Seiko. And I love that. I love that. Like when I see a marker like that, I know it's a Seiko. Mm-hmm. Um, you have the waffle pattern dial, you have these big, bold hands, and then you have the second hand that even has a little bit of blue to it, but it all just kind of works together. And I, I appreciate it. I, I, I like it. I think yeah. it's a small detail, but it definitely catches my attention. Very cool. Um, okay. Least favorite feature. Least, <laughs> least favorite is just the size in general. Really? Um, yeah. I think with, with the thickness of this watch and the weight of it, it was very, very heavy. And I think that for me, it just didn't wear as comfortably on the wrist. That being said, 45, I think it, it fit very similar like it took them, it took up the same amount of real estate on my wrist as my Tudor Herod, Herod's diver did. However, this was a lot heavier. It was a little bit bulkier, which doesn't really make sense because I think that Herod's is even thicker. But for some reason, it just it wore really heavy, and it may be because of that twenty millimeter bracelet just didn't the proportions didn't work out. Maybe. Where it maybe a twenty two would have made it wear a little bit more even. It just it it felt, I don't wear my watches too loose, but again, it just felt really heavy, really bulky. Um, and so that's probably my least favorite thing about the watch. Yeah. What about you? You know, I will, I'll say the bracelet. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think we're all very critical about Seiko bracelets. Let's be honest. There are certain things that we all kind of expect to be slightly, I hate to use the word disappointed, but (laughs) we know not to have too high of expectations of certain things on Seiko divers. That's just the reality to it. Um, now I will say the bracelet on this watch was better than a lot of previous Seiko models that I've had Seiko divers that I've had that I've handled. It was a much better bracelet. You mentioned the the higher end finishing and Mm -hmm. I did really appreciate that, but maybe now that you're talking about the weight, Mm -hmm. maybe that bracelet, cause the bracelet's still light. And especially when you have that heavier case, it does make it feel a little bit awkward and yeah. unbalanced. Yeah. And I think that's probably that kind of does tie into what you were talking about with the weight of it. Cause mm-hmm. I didn't find it necessarily to be too big, but it wore a little kind of weird sometimes. Yeah. Um, and I think that that probably does have to do with the bracelet. The The clasp is great. You know, the, the finishing is great, but I just, it still feels like a Seiko bracelet. And I, especially when you get to, you know, Seiko is doing something really neat. And the fact that they're, they're creating the Seiko, they call it Seiko Lux Mm -hmm. and it's their higher end Seiko divers. And to me though, if you're going to label yourself as like Lux is luxury, you know, if you're going to label yourself that way, and if you're going to charge double what you would normally charge, there needs to be a little bit more Mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. It's just my opinion. I agree. I was a little let down by the bracelet myself. 
Not Especially sure. at this, no, at this price range. Um, yeah, like, sure. like low, low, you know, or, I don't want to say lower end, but like entry level Seiko divers, like the the SKX or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't expect to be in love with the bracelet. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a couple hundred dollars watch. I really don't expect to be in love with every feature of it. But for a thousand dollars, especially considering all the competition you can get, yeah, uh, which we'll you know get into here in a bit. But yeah. um. Yeah, I just I have a little bit of a higher expectation. Yeah, so understandable. All right, so um, how versatile do you think this watch is, and do you think it suits its designated purpose? Who's the watch designed for? Yeah, I mean, designated purpose. It's a diver, so mm-hmm. most definitely it, it does what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Um, I I think you could probably get technical in the. Again, the other, man, I feel like I'm just digging all this watch so much, but I really do love this watch, y'all. I promise. Um, but, you know, I think you can be critical about the it being for a diver in the sense that it still has that bezel problem mm-hmm. that every Seiko seems to have where it doesn't quite line up exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you consider that it is a dive bezel, it's meant for a specific reason. Yeah, given, okay, most divers use computers now. Yeah. But if it's built that way and if it's built for a reason, it should fulfill that reason so that that would be my one critique of that Mm -hmm. it's not as bad as a lot of other bezels I (laughs) will say it's much better yeah um but yeah I mean I think that versatility it's a sports watch it's not something that you're going to be able to wear every day um at 20 millimeter lugs you could put so many strap options on this and I I think that that definitely helps make it more versatile but yeah I I think that it's just something that you know if you're looking for a sports watch this is a sports watch it's not something that would ever be mistaken for anything else yeah I agree yeah so I think this watch is not that versatile in my opinion I I scored it like a five out of 10. I think, um, again, it's, it's not meant to be a dressier diver. Like we, we sometimes see, uh, it's, it's very casual. You can't really dress, especially this ice blue. You can't really dress it up any, anymore. Um, maybe some, you know, if you had a black and silver, it might be a little bit more dressy, but, but these colorways that they did are just meant to be really casual and they're meant to, meant to be explorer watches, meant to be out in the field and, and not necessarily, um, embody a dressier environment. So that's totally fine. And Mm -hmm. I think, you know, as far as this, you know, who the watch is for, I think hardcore Seiko fans will like this watch. I think if you've never had a Seiko diver, this isn't the the diver for you. I think it's a little heavy. I think you're going to be disappointed in the proportions unless you have a big wrist. And I've, I've had many divers in my collection and this is just not my favorite as far as how it feels and fits on the wrist because of the weight, because of the size. So again, I would probably steer away if you've never worn a Seiko diver before. That being said, um, if you kind of know what you're getting yourself into, then then it's great and you could be very happy with this watch. Well, so let's talk value. Okay. So it retails at what, like 900 and... 900. Oh, 900 even. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Um, okay. So, so how do you feel about the value for its cost? Uh, this is kind of tough actually, because I do think I can see where Seiko is trying to move up a level in, in affordability and just their level of quality. But like I said, I'm just, I'm not impressed with the accuracy for almost a thousand dollars. I think there's micro brands that are, you know, they're, they're adjusting the movements before they get shipped out and you're getting incredibly accurate. Even if it's just like a Swiss ETA or Salita, you're, you're still getting more accuracy in that. And, and a lot of, there's micro brands that are using Seiko movements and they are, they're tuning them. They're, they're adjusting yeah, they're them, adjusting before. them yeah. before shipment. I, I don't know why I couldn't think about that. And so you're getting a watch that's been hand adjusted before getting to you. Whereas Seiko, you know, just try to remember their, their mass produced watches. So you never know what you're going to get out of the box. You can get something that runs really well, or you can get something that runs really crummy. And if you, again, if you know that going into it and you're fine with it, I think it's okay. But I just wasn't impressed by this watch at this price point. I've had Seiko's, um, you know, at a, at a lower price point with a ceramic bezel, it's a little bit better finishing. And, and so I, I, I have a hard time seeing the justification for $900 in this piece. I know it's a, a U.S. edition. I just don't, I can't really get it. I think this price range would be better at like six to $700. $900 is a little bit of a reach. Um, it's a great watch, no doubt. And I'm sure you can probably find these at a discount as you usually can with many Seikos. Again, I just, I don't know. There's just something, it'd be really hard for me to spend this kind of money on, on this Seiko for yeah. sure. What about you? You know, I think one of the things you just said, and I think that it's something maybe we forget about Seiko, is this is a super mass produced watch. Mm -hmm. It's available in every department store. It's available 
everywhere. We're not talking about like a million watches a year, like with a lot of your higher end brands. We're talking millions of watches a year. And maybe we take it a little too seriously for Mm -hmm. the fact that it is like a super mass produced watch. That being said, you know, I still have a higher expectation for something that's super mass produced at a certain price point. Um, and this is where I agree with you that micro brands are, are killing it. And I think especially, you know, five years ago before social media started really blowing up, I don't think Seiko had a worry. You know, nobody knew about micro brands. There was no way to really find micro brands. You couldn't see them anywhere. You couldn't, you know, you didn't see them posted. You didn't see anybody talking about it. You didn't see videos about it. But now, mm-hmm. now you have videos everywhere. You have the power of social media. You have podcasts. You have everything else. And micro brands are, are coming up in a way that they've never done before. A lot of them using these same movements, but having better finishing, better bracelets, better quality control than Seiko is at a less a lesser price point. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that that's a it. It's very fair to say that, you know, I expect Seiko to step up a little bit. If yeah. you want to charge this sort of price point, the the quality needs to be there. Now, I can see holding this watch, looking at this watch, I can see little things that they did to mm-hmm. make it better. And mm-hmm. and I can respect that. But I think that they there's still room to improve. For sure. So. I agree. All right. So would this be a watch that gets regular wear and lasts long term in your collection? If I got it at a good price, yes. Like I do really like this watch. I like the I like the bigness of it. Mm-hmm. I I I like that. You know, it it would get regular wear as much as anything else in my collection mm-hmm. kind of gets regular wear. Yeah. But yeah, I mean I liked it. I I really did. Um, what about you? I probably not. I, I think that while I do like larger divers and and I've certainly worn watches that are probably too big for me by normal standards, but and I, I know I say this a lot on the podcast, you know, especially with Seiko. I'm like, oh, they've done magic. This just fits incredibly well on your wrist. Not so much with this one. I'm, I'm okay. not going to lie. Like this one to me just wore really big, was really hefty. Um, I think for a six, you know, and a half inch wrist, it's it's probably pushing it a little bit as far as like, especially on the lug to lug. You know, it, it doesn't hang off of my wrist, but again, just the bulkiness of the watch, their proportions. Now, it did have downward lugs. I didn't really talk about that. That do help it wear a little bit more comfortably on the yeah. wrist. I just felt like it was really big. And for me, I'm just not going to wear something that I feel uncomfortable with because of the comfort level of the watch itself. You know, there's certain things that I, I wouldn't say that if Seiko wanted to offer this watch at $900, things that I would look for in it, maybe a better clasp, maybe the bezel, uh, you know, the bezel action was a little gummy to me. It was a little sticky. Now, I don't know if I should knock that out because sometimes we get prototype models. We get, you know, models that are being passed around to press, but I have a feeling that that's just the way it is too. Yeah. And I wasn't really impressed with that. Alignment issues should be definitely fact, you know, our quality check before they get sent out. And uh, a ceramic bezel would be nice at this price point as well. So it's, I'm not saying that Seiko should offer this for a lesser price, but I think if you're going to offer it for $900, do these things to just up the level a little bit. Um, and, and the refinement of the watch itself, the quality is good. A, a little disappointed in the bracelet disappoint in the class a little bit just in the action and you know maybe even at offering a you know a quick adjust class you know micro brands are doing it. why can't you do it at this price point so yeah those are just some of the things I was a little little let down by by the watch overall it's it is a stunning watch and I think if I had a bigger wrist I would definitely feel a lot differently but my wrist being the way they are <laughs> a little smaller um I just I don't see me wearing this long term in my collection it's still a great watch though still, still no stunner. yeah fair enough and it was it, it's an absolutely beautiful watch for sure one thing we didn't talk about is that it does have a cyclops window it does have a cyclops yep. it does so I'm not the biggest fan of it yeah but I mean that's just me in yeah. general I, I think I'm, I'm, not I'm just really used to that because that's just a psycho diver I mean yeah. most like 99 percent have it so yeah it's something you you either love or hate. A lot of people, I mean, there are a lot of people like them. A lot of people don't. I think as I get older, I like them a little bit more just because you can't see the date. You're already little. planning, planning I know, ahead. <laughs> I know. Um, but I, there is something to be said about a, a cleanness of, of not having the Cyclops there. And I think for certain watches, it works. For others, it doesn't. It did work for this. Mm-hmm. I will say, I, I agree. For certain watches, it works. For some, it doesn't. Like, I'm not the biggest fan uh, of, like, dressier watches with Cyclops windows. Mm-hmm. But but on a sports watch, it did. It, it worked incredibly well. Yeah. I think that's it. That's it. Wraps us up. 
Man. All right. Well, um, it, we will have uh, notes and photos and everything that we have talked about on our website, www.tennand2.com. Be sure to follow us over on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitter and YouTube at 10 and 2 Media. And that's all, y'all. Yeah. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.